I got a question for you. Are you a jig fisherman or a minnow fisherman? I happen to be both. We're going to talk about it. Y'all stay tuned for that. Welcome to Walking on Water. I'm Anthony. My channel is about fishing, fellowship, and faith. See, God created this world for us and gave us all the senses we need to dwell here. I'm just trying to show you another way, the way he intended. If this interests you, then I'll tell you like Christ told Simon Peter, follow me and I'll make you a fisherman of men. Facts. So are you coming? <laughs> Method works. Always stay close to the promises of God. Welcome back to another episode of Walking on Water. Happy New Year to all my subscribers out there. Hey, we're gonna try to get them today. I'm at Jordan Lake. I gotta go scouting. I wanna thank all my new subscribers and I wanna thank everybody for giving me the thumbs up. You know, we're gonna put out as much information as we can on this channel. Keeping it basic, how to get them, where to look for them, etc., etc. So let's get into it. Wintertime fishing can be hard. I'm talking apple bobbing with no front teeth hard. Y'all know what I'm saying. And because of that, there's a certain mindset you got to have in the wintertime. Let's think about this. In the wintertime, when the temperatures drop really low, I'm talking below freezing, you normally get a weather alert that's saying uh, a freeze warning. And when you have that freeze warning, what do they tell you to do? Leave your faucets dripping. Now, why is that? Because a dripping faucet won't freeze. Let me explain. That moving water going through your pipeline, it's not gonna freeze. So we gotta think about it the same way when we on the water. See, the fish don't have no alert system to tell them, hey, it's gonna freeze up. In most lakes and ponds, the water that's moving rarely ever freezes. It'd be the outside edge so I'm gonna show y'all, I'll post this picture showing that the outside of this pond is frozen, but where the current is flowing is still open water. And since we understand that shallow water will freeze before deep water, now you understand where the fish are going in the wintertime. They're headed to deep water, wherever there's some current. You can find your current when you find your creek channel. So if you got a mapping system, you gotta use it because that's where your running water is gonna be. And so therefore it won't never freeze. And most of your fish, that's where they're gonna be. So basically when I first get to the lake, I'm gonna go straight to the dam. Normally on each, on a pond or a lake, you're gonna have a dam area. That's normally your deepest water and all the water around gonna flow towards that dam. So I'll start out at the dam, and then I'll follow the creek channel back into coves. You know, I'll show that behind me over there. That's the dam, and I'm at Jordan Lake, so that's the Jordan Lake Dam over there. So, so I'll start out at the dam, and then drive, follow the creek channel, because the creek channel is really where how fish migrate through the lake. You would think they would just to get to one side to the other side of the lake, they would just swim straight across. That's not how fish move. They follow the contours, they follow creek channels. It's like the highway of the lake. So 
looking at this map, I'm gonna show you all the map and I'm gonna show you where normally you're gonna find your fish holding. And hopefully they'll be there. And then I'm gonna show you two methods that I use, jigs and minnows, how I go after these fish. Before I forget, if you enjoy this type of content, I'm gonna ask that you give this video a thumbs up. That way it'll be shared around and the YouTube algorithm I share it to everybody. Hey, I appreciate you. Okay, so I'm gonna pause this screen. So I want you to look at this. Now on the right side of the screen, it shows the dam. And then you see these purple lines, that's the creek channel. So all the water is flowing towards the dam. And the fish, they're gonna be on the turns or the points around little islands, that's how they're gonna travel. So that's where I'm gonna be looking. I just follow along the creek channel until it runs up against a bank or it runs up on a point. That's normally where the fish is gonna be setting. Let's, so we're gonna ride around and see if we can find them. And then I'll show y'all the methods I'm gonna use. Remember, I said I'm going to use two methods, one with the jig and the other with the minnows. I'm following along the creek channel. I'm right here against a point, and I've located fish. And they all at about 18 to 20. Bunch of fish there. So now that I've located the fish, I followed the creek channel, located a school of fish, a bunch of fish actually. Now that I've located schools of fish, well, ain't nothing to do now but to hit them. Now today, to get these fish, I'm gonna be using two methods. And the first method is gonna be one poling. That's, that just means you got one pole and one jig. And I like to use this right here, I make this. This is a one eighth ounce head, smashed down, and this has a hole in it, if you can see that. Now you might ask, Anthony, why you drill a hole in it? Well, because I like using crappy nibbles. And these crappy nibbles, instead of putting it on the back of that hook, I'm actually putting it through the eye. I smash it in the head. You know, I catch, I use one crappy nibble, and I might catch three or four fish with just that one crappy nibble. So basically, you can use a hammer to smash the head down and drill it out. Or if you got a C-clamp, you can just tighten the C-clamp and then flatten the head down. Flatten the head, and then drill the hole and stick your crappy nibble inside. So that's the first method. I spot one about right off the bottom. See if I can get him to take it. Got him. It's a good one. It's a good one. I gotta reach in for this one. Oh, wee! Go check him out. A little dent in his tail. That's right there. That's a slab. That's the first one going in the box. Now that I showed you the jig, I'm gonna show you the minnow. Now in the wintertime, this works good because the fish like to sit on bottom. So I like to do bottom bouncing. Now this is what I use. I use a swivel, my main line to a swivel. Then it has a hook, actually has two hooks. There's the second hook. Now what's, what makes this special at the end of it, you drop this to the bottom, and once it hit bottom, you wind it up, give it like two turns to get it right off the bottom, and then you'll have your minnows dangling from your hook. Now, I pre-rigged this, and I'd like to show you why. If you can see this, I got a bobber stop. That way my hook can swivel, and it always stays out. It always sticks out like that. 
They never get wrapped. And a lot of times when you catch a fish on it, you you don't lose your minnow. I don't know why that is, but you won't lose your minnow. So you got your lead, then you got your hook, free spinning. You got two hooks and then a swivel. That way, if I want to switch to jig fishing, I can. But it's just, I pre-rig these. They work well. That's the second method. So let me get rigged up, put these in the water. See if we can hit them. Oh, I'm not getting the bump. Trying to ease off with it. Got him. A double mental putting in work. It's not a good one. Double mental putting in work. Put them in a the box. Hopping along the bottom. That's all I'm doing, just hopping it. I just had a bump. <clears throat> Got him. Another good one. Come on up. I ain't got my net today. Good old bass. <laughs> Gotta love that. That jig putting in work. Putting in work. Put him in the box. I thought I had my camera rolling on this one, y'all. 2.3. Camera wasn't rolling. Still a good one. Look at the belly on her. Gosh, let's get a measurement on her. You can see that fish is about 15 inches. A whopper, 15 inches. About six inches wide from top to bottom. That's a good one. Definitely gonna go in the box. All right, y'all, I've been fishing for a couple of hours, about three, four hours. Got about 15. Uh, the sun is going to set in a little bit. I got out here kind of late. But I just wanted to show you all the methods that I use during the winter time. When I water get cold, you want to see if you can try to find that leaking faucet. You know, because that's where the fish is going to be. For y'all that don't know, the only thing better than having one two-pounder is having two two-pounders. <laughs> y'all see them. Look at the bellies on them. They go them backs. Can't complain about that. Better get you some. Anyway, hey, this has been another episode of Walking on Water. Y'all be blessed.